All right, so uh, first, could you tell me your name and what you do at uh, the Johnson Space Center? Hi, my name is Lily Rosewoods, and I'm an EVA flight controller and trainer at Johnson Space Center. EVA is just a fancy word for spacewalks. So uh, in my group, we design the spacewalks, train crew members how to perform them, and then support their spacewalk real time and mission control. So when you say design the spacewalk, what does that mean? Almost choreographing it, uh, kind of like a dance. So uh, really, uh, we'll get the requirements kind of from engineering, saying, hey, you know, we need to install something or we need to fix something, remove and replace it. So we get those requirements, uh, what we need to install something at, a certain torque value, and then we actually plan where the crew members go, where their safety tether routing is, where they pick up hardware, what tools they take out with them. Really just plan the entire space box so that they're prepared. And so when you say like torque requirements, safety tether routing, so that's, what, what, what does that mean and why is that level of detail necessary? Uh, yeah, so safety tethers, uh, the crew members sort of like rock climbing, they're always tethered to stations, they have a retractable reel with them. And uh, tether routing, I mean the space station is the size of a football field really, so depending on where you're going, that's really critical. Uh, knowing your pathway back to the airlock and you have that emergency. And then torque value, so say you're um, removing and replacing basically a big box in, in uh, December 2013, it, the box was a hot module. So uh, that has four bolts you can install it with and some fluid quick disconnects of ammonia. So you have to know when you bolt that large seven, eight hundred pound object and you bolt it down the station, you need to know what torque settings to, to hold that down to. Uh, how to work with the ammonia, uh, what happens if you if you get it on the audio. Uh, all of those contingencies and you train and you train and you throw a lot of malfunctions so that should anything arise, you prepare for it on all of And why do we use ammonia? Why do we use ammonia? Yeah. Uh, ammonia is a really effective cooling on the space station. We don't use it inside. We have a heat exchanger which uh, changes the, the, the heating and cooling from the ammonia exposed to vacuum in the space uh, with water which internally cools the space station. Cool. And so how has the space station program and all the EVAs that we've had to do, not just building it but repairing it, uh, help prepare us for moving out beyond low Earth orbit again? That's a great question. So everything we're learning, uh, well, we're learning a lot about the space suit itself, uh, how it how it functions, how functions we can have with it. Um, I think in general, it's just constantly preparing us to and, and challenging us to think about what if or, or what will happen if this if this breaks or what happens if we get water in the helmet, for example. Um, so it's almost just an exercise in in preparedness and competence and technical capability and, and there's definitely so many analogs that we can use when going to Mars or NASA. I was about to bring up Luca a from a couple years ago and that being a really big deal about getting back to the airlock. I mean they did a, an amazing job which meant everybody who trained them did an amazing job at uh, getting him back to the, the airlock when he had a water leak in his helmet. Um, so Going back to the planning, I know that a couple of astronauts that I've listened to interviews of, like Mac Massimino and Story Musgrave, have said, like you said, it's a lot like a dance. You're, you're really planning these things out. And so, when, how big of a deal is it making sure you know where you're going? Because I know time is a huge factor when doing an EVA. So, where is the biggest time saved whenever you're going through the planning phase before you send them up into space when you're, when you're writing the choreograph? Yeah, I guess just uh, in the development run, so we'll, we'll do development runs, not necessarily with the crew that will perform it on orbit, but with engineers and, and previous astronauts. And uh, just working through those efficiencies, um, maybe planning tasks in a certain order so that uh, if you're translating out to a certain section, you, you do that task first and then you do more outboard. Um, but really it's just training and, and really uh, you know studying the procedures. Sometimes there can be, for example, a critical procedure critical contingency EVA, so if something fails in the space station that if we don't fix it within a couple of weeks, we might have to abandon the space station. So they don't really have, if that happens, they might not be trained in that type of EVA. So really, really studying, having video conferences with trainers on the ground, and just be a woman, you never know. Really knowing your procedures that if something comes up or, or you're just ready for it, if you know that something goes wrong, you're kind of prepared for what that contingency step might be. Excellent. And, uh, which is the EVA of the future you're most looking forward to seeing and helping them train for? Um, 
I think an asteroid or Mars would be great just because it's a bit of a different uh, environment. Yeah. But uh, yeah. just in general, even any, any space walk on the space station is really exciting. And uh, there's always something that comes up that really challenges us as engineers. And yep. That's the Apollo 13 experience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which you hope they don't happen, but you always need to be ready for. Uh, and also, if you get to train for the asteroid or Mars, you might get to talk to some of the old Apollo folks and <laughs> see how they did it back in the day. All right, well, thank you so much. Yeah.